Hi guys, welcome back to Crazy Brave Homeschool. If you're new here, I'm Ashley and this is my homeschool channel where I document nothing but our homeschool experience, uh, educating my third grader and kindergarten in the Charlotte Mason method. So this video is really just kind of like a catch up to a shift that we have made in our math. Um, I actually recently, like just a couple videos back, posted a like day in the life of our language arts and math lessons with my third grader. Um, and it was our first introduction into formal multiplication using the Simply Charlotte Mason arithmetic series. So we are actually traditionally a right start family. Okay, I'm realizing that like the camera's really high because so we are traditionally a right start family. I've used level A and level B with my daughter and we were planning on moving into level C for third grade. Well, that's what we did. And um, I got into this getting to about lesson 60. We skipped um, the first several lessons that were just way too much review. Plus we do quite a bit of summer schooling. So we just didn't like really need that refresher. And what I found as we got into this level is that I just didn't really love the way it was teaching subtraction. Um, my daughter had, had learned subtraction in second grade, but I was really just trying to like solidify it before starting multiplication. And um, she did need quite a bit more work with regrouping. Um, and I just, I don't know, there was something about the way this was going about it that wasn't really registering with her. And so I decided to get a math program that we had tried in the first grade. We did Simply Charlotte Mason book one in the first grade, and I actually did it alongside Right Start Level A. I really liked how both um, conceptual, but also just straightforward this program is. Uh, especially in book one, it's really manipulative heavy. It's got great number sense, but it also was just like very straightforward, almost like, like drill work, like math drills. So it was excellent review. But I do much more appreciate how hands-on Right Start is. Like, I just think this is a fantastic program. So I think that Simply Charlotte Mason is a great supplement, um, but I typically wouldn't use it as a standalone. However, when I looked at how um, book three was um, teaching long subtraction with uh, dimes and pennies, um, and they were using those manipulatives to teach regrouping, I was really into that and decided to start this uh, with my daughter this year and set down Right Start and just use this as our sole math. Um, the subtraction went so well and I'm really, really grateful to this book for that. So we made it um, about a quarter of the way through until we reached the multiplication, uh, formal multiplication. My daughter has had a little bit of multiplication practice um, with musical multiplication with The Good and the Beautiful, and we've been working on a multiplication flower book, but we haven't had any like real number sense yet, um, and she has not learned her multiplication times tables at all, so it's like, you know, she's right in the, the early stages. Um, at first, I was really liking the way that this was going about teaching multiplication. Um, I really only read through the first few lessons, um, but I liked how unique the times table was. It was definitely different than your traditional like grid. Um, and I appreciated how it was continuing to use change to reinforce um, place value. But um, what I found after lesson two was that this program is, and you know what? I'm sorry, I'm actually holding up the wrong one. So with Simply Charlotte Mason, books two and books three go over formal multiplication. Book two goes from numbers like two through six, I think, and then book three goes from seven to 12. And so thankfully I had book two. And so, th sorry, this is the one I'm talking about. We did our first couple lessons with this. And what I didn't love is that, um, it very quickly takes the child from conceptual into memorization and um, memorizing the times to the two times table. Is that how you say it? Um, by lesson three. And the way that I was reading this lesson, it was really like, um, you know, basically drill these questions after making the table and in a way, don't really move forward until 
and I totally lost the page where the lesson was at. But don't really move forward until the child has her times two table memorized. Um, there was another thing too that I noticed that I was pretty perplexed about is that it started teaching written multiplication by lesson three. So I believe the example was like 36 times two and to show the child how this looks, you know, stacked on paper, on grid paper, and to um, do the problem on paper, you know, six times two and then three times two. Um, okay, right, sorry, I got interrupted. Um, it's not necessarily a difficult thing to teach, but like, I just, I've, I am surprised with Simply Charlotte Mason that they brought in abstract math within lesson three of formal multiplication. And then within the same lesson, and they call this an experimental problem to see like if the child knows how to solve it, but it was okay. So now let's take 36 times 20. You know, we just did 36 times two. Let's do 36 times 20 uh, on paper. And um, without really explaining to the child how it would be done, the book assumes that the child, because they have already grasped um, carrying the one, they've grasped their ones and their tens, that they would know how to um, do a problem like this. And they even assume that the child may know, because of the tens place, that you would need to write in a zero um, on, you know, to solve the problem. I was just really thrown. Um, they did say it's an experimental problem, but then in the following lessons, as they continue the times tables into three and four and so on, they continue to bring in these double digit multipliers. Um, and they do continue to say, this is an experimental problem, but again, I'm just really surprised that they would bring in such abstract math before um, the child can grasp the multiplication in a conceptual sense. Um, so, so I decided to sit down with Right Start. Now, Right Start Level C, and if I haven't already mentioned this, really doesn't hit a whole lot of multiplication. Um, if it did, I would have skipped to it, you know, after doing our subtraction with Simply Charlotte Mason, but it really doesn't. That's in level D. And technically level D, um, I think in some circles is considered a third grade math program. Okay, it's a busy day here today. <laughs> okay, so level D really is considered the formal multiplication um, book. And I have it because I was planning on using this next year with her once we got through level C. So I started looking into the multiplication problems in here and immediately it's like, it's so funny. Whenever I leave Right Start for a little while and then I um, come back to it or even just like look through it, I'm always just like, I'm, I, I'm so comforted by it and I feel like so held by it because I just think it's such a stellar math program. Um, but when I started looking into how they teach multiplication, I was just like, wow, like this is really night and day. This is um, um, very much based on uh, memorization of the times tables and um, quite a bit of abstract math in my opinion. Um, this is, Right Start has always been super heavy on conceptual math. To like um, a fault maybe in our homeschool at times, sometimes my daughter gets a little annoyed at how manipulative heavy this is, but the number sense you just can't argue, it's just so good. So I started looking into the multiplication lessons with this, but then, you know, I, I did start thinking like, well, how conceptual can multiplication really be? Because at a certain point, you just have to know your facts. It's not like you are going to um, need to see what nine taken five times looks like. You know, obviously, eventually you just need to know those facts and just move forward with your life. So like how conceptual does it need to be? And I sat down with my husband and I was comparing both programs. I'm like, listen, you gotta help me with this. We've got this one that is very memorization heavy. It's a little more abstract and it's like just drill work. It's like memorize those facts. Then you've got 
Bright Start, which has incredible number sense, but is this too conceptual? Is it just kind of like, let's just get these facts memorized, right? My husband very much sided with Simply Charlotte Mason because he's like, this is how I learned multiplication, just memorize the facts and move forward. But I don't know, a big piece of me was like, I don't think that's the way. I really think that we should go conceptual first to really just gain that solid understanding of what multiplication is. And then we will move forward with um, memori like memorizing the table. So for one more lesson, I did actually give this the benefit of the doubt and I was like, well, okay, you know what? My daughter sometimes really does prefer just a straightforward approach. And I tried to do the lesson where it was kind of drilling a bunch of questions about um, uh, the multiple of two and um, her using this, you know, very unique um, times two table to answer the questions. And like that went well enough, but then it's kind of like, and the lesson um, to me, the way it's written kind of insinuated, right? Like make sure she masters this before moving forward. Um, and like that took five minutes for us to do. I can't just like keep reading off the same drill questions to her again and again. And I didn't want to take her into that written multiplication of 36 times 20. So I just like didn't even know where to go. So after the five minutes, I was like, you know what? Without even reviewing the, le the, the first lesson of multiplication too much, I just grabbed this, I opened it and we just went for it. We had a great lesson with this. Um, I didn't know how soon this got into building a multiplication table um, because I know that Right Start does want you to understand the conceptual first. Um, but I think it was actually eight lessons into the multiplication that, or maybe 10, but it does start building the table pretty, pretty early on. Um, so I just think I'm more comfortable with this. I don't actually know what to do with this for the multiplication. <laughs> I just like don't really know how to move forward with it. Um, this is just our, our cozy spot. Like I'm so comfortable with Right Start. Um, so one thing that I did hear from some reviews with this is that some children by the end of level D do not have their facts memorized yet. And I think in large part that, that well, that, that's maybe for two reasons. One of the reasons being that, again, I keep using this word, but Right Start is more about the hands-on and the conceptual before the memorization when it comes to multiplication. But another thing too is that the games are really important. The games reinforce the lesson. For Math with Confidence families, they, they'll totally know what I'm talking about because there's a lot of activities with that. Um, the workbook, look how tiny it is. You know, it's very thin. And, um, and this is a reason I love this program too because we're not a really heavy workbook family. Even in level D, there is um, only one, there is only one sheet of work. So like this would be an example of uh, around lesson, I don't know what lesson this is, it's worksheet 18. This is, um, so this is how they do uh, one version of their multiplication table. It's called the short table. They also teach the, the square table too. But like this would just be for one lesson and I love this. This is so easy to digest. It's not overwhelming for my daughter. Um, so the worksheet reinforces the lesson, but the game reinforces it too. So because there's not a lot of written work with Right Start, it is imperative that you are playing the games. We don't play every game that's recommended for every lesson, but uh, we do play several. And I really think that that is the ticket to learning those multiplication facts by the end of this level. Um, you know, and if for whatever reason, we get into this and we get near finishing it and I feel like her multiplication facts need more work, I could get Kate Snow's multiplication facts that stick um, and do that over the summer with her, which I think would be perfect. Um, I can also use the, um, the drill questions in Simply Charlotte Mason. Um, I could use these in tandem too. Like once she starts learning her table, um, I wouldn't have her use the table that they come up with because that would be way too confusing. They're just really different. So we would use this table, um, but I could use the drill questions out of this to help her with those facts. 
in fact, yeah, maybe I would do like a five minute um, review at the end of each lesson with this once the those facts are taught out of Right Start. So this is exciting that we're moving into level D a lot sooner than I thought. But what does that mean for level C? And uh, what does that mean for gaps, right? I, I don't want there to be gaps. Um, so what I did was I looked through level C to see what exactly um, we may be missing that is important. And I did highlight the objectives that I thought would be necessary for us to do. Okay, so it's just these ones at the very bottom that um, I think it would be good for us to, some of it might be review, measurement, geometry, fractions, uh, data, and calculator. A lot of that will be repeated in level D, but again, I don't want there to be any gaps. I have both the programs. So I think as soon as we get through the multiplication in level D, I will actually come back to this, finish these units. That may take uh, likely, that will likely take the rest of the year. Um, and then we will probably finish level D in the fourth grade. That's what makes the most sense in the timeline in my head right now. So it's not a massive math change because we've already done right start before, but it is exciting that we get to move into level D I get to teach her multiplication using the curriculum that I'm most familiar with. Um, I am a little surprised with this change only because the subtraction in Simply Charlotte Mason was like so stellar, but that's okay. It's it, If you have the materials and you understand your why, a pivot is totally okay and I'm really excited about this one. So I'll keep you guys updated on so I will let you guys know how our math goes with level D and then back to level C throughout the rest of the year. But anyway, thanks for sticking around and hope you guys are having a great December. I will see you soon.